Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be chapter 3 of the book of Judges. So let's take a look. Verse 1. Now these are the nations which the Lord left. So we're talking about the Canaanite nations. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them. In other words, these are left behind. The Lord told Israel to, to kill them and drive them out. But because they were dis Israel was disobedient. He left them behind. And to prove means to, well, to prove their faithfulness. Are they going to be separated from them? Or are they going to be joined unto them and their gods? Now, these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. So evidently this is a new generation and they didn't know what had happened prior. Verse two, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war at the least such as before knew nothing thereof. So evidently, uh, they were lacking in skills for fighting. And if you listen to demon, nomina demon nominational preachers, they'll tell you that, uh, well, you know, Jesus, well, you know, the God of the Old Testament, he was that evil, mean God, you know, of laws and judgment and wrath. But now we have that new improved New Testament God, Jesus, who became a human, and uh, now he understands how rough we have it, so now he loves everybody. Uh, yeah, I, I've actually heard that kind of stuff. You know what? The Bible teaches Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Or, I am the Lord, I change not. Yes, both of those are in the Bible. I am the Lord, I change not. The Lord does, uh, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. All right, so who's left behind? Verse 3 tells you, namely, five lords of the Philistines. Now, what were the Philistines? Well, some of the Philistines were giants. Remember, Goliath that faced David was a Philistine. Namely, five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering in of Hamath. Baal Hermon, Mount Baal Hermon. Mount means, you know, mountain. Baal is a word for Lord. Uh, it's just a generic word that means Lord. That's all it means. So they're saying mountain, uh, mountain, Lord Hermon. Now, I'm wondering if there is a fallen angel named Hermon. Hermon? I, you know, I don't know. But why would they name a mountain after Lord Hermon. Well, maybe it was a human king. I don't know. But what's interesting is that in the Book of Enoch, which, you know, I'm not a big fan of the Book of Enoch, and I never really quote it when I'm doing my Bible doctrinal studies. So... But in on Mount Hermon, 
supposedly, according to the book of Enoch, that was where the fallen angels decided that they were going to pollute the bloodline of the women, humankind. Genesis 6, the flood. And if you don't have an idea what I'm talking about, uh, pause right here. Click on my name. Go to the uh, main page. Go to playlists and look for the angels that sinned. And look at carefully into Genesis 6. Yeah. See, they tried to pollute the bloodline. That's why these, you know, there were giants before the flood. And the Bible says there were giants after the flood. But if supposedly all the fallen angels on Mount Hermon made up an agreement with each other. And said, all right, we're going to get together and we're going to pollute the bloodlines. We're going to marry the women. Unless, of course, you want to believe that um, men who believed in the Lord married women who didn't believe in the Lord. And the women got pregnant with giants who would have six fingers and six toes. And that's the nonsense that they teach is in churches nowadays. Suppose, well... I call they call it they call themselves churches, but yeah. So it's funny they mention Mount Baal Hermon, Mount Lord Hermon, Hermon, unto their entering in of Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken, listen, unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. And, verse 4, And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites, and remember, Esau married two Hittite women, and the Amorites, and the Parasites, I mean Perizzites, and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And what did they do? And they took their daughters to be their wives, and they gave their daughters to their sons, and served their gods, plural. Oh boy, here we go. Let's skip on over to Ezra chapter 9. Now Ezra, I think uh, Ezra, I think Ezra was the priest. And then Nehemiah covers the same time period, was the king. And uh, they were Judah that, when they were, Jerusalem was taken into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar. You read about that in the book of Daniel. Well, after Babylon fell to the Medes and the Persians, the Medes and the Persians allowed Judah to return back to Jerusalem to rebuild it. And Ezra the priest, you know, the priest served God. They were the priest tribe, uh, Levites. They were, uh, well, this is their account. So let's look at Ezra 9 and verse 1. Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not have not separated themselves from the people of the lands. Haven't you ever heard the churches going, oh, we got to have unity. Unity. Let's, we're all brothers. Let's all join hands and sing Kumbaya. That's not what the Bible says. You know, the Bible put uh, certain people in certain parts of the world and separated us for, evidently for a reason, didn't he? Does that mean that one group of people is better than the other? Not in the eyes of the Lord, probably, but, uh, you know, separation. The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations. What's an abomination, Chaplain Bob? Oh, I'm glad you asked that question. Real, real simple. An abomination is a sin 
that God really, really, really hates. I mean, God hates all sin, but an abomination is an extra special uh, 10 out of 10 sin that he really, really, really hates. You know, there's, there's sin and then there's abominations. So the people, they have not separated themselves from the people of the lands doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. So what is their sin? Verse 2. Hmm. Let's take a look at that. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves. Who took their daughters? They took the daughters of the Canaanites. They have taken their daughters for themselves and for their sons. So that the holy seed. So that the holy seed. Have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. What's a trespass? Means you're someplace where you're not supposed to be. If you're on somebody else's land, you're trespassing. You're, on, you're not supposed to be where you're supposed to be. And what is this stuff about a holy seed? Well, if there's a holy seed, that means there is an unholy seed. And what did Ezra think about all this? Verse 3. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment. He ripped his clothes and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head. He pulled his stinking hair out of his head and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down astonished. Astonished. You mean the Levites have married the unholy seed? He pulled his hair out. But but that doesn't matter. Jesus loves everybody, they tell us. No, he doesn't. Let's go back to Judges chapter 3, verse 5. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites, and Amorites, and Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites, and they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. Here's the punchline. Number seven, you're going to be hearing that this, you're going to be hearing this a lot. If you listen to this study, verse seven, and the children of Israel did evil. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And forgot the Lord their God and served Balaam and the groves. What's Balaam? Baal means Lord. It was so associated with Satanism, God said, don't call me that anymore. Don't call me Baal, Baal, Baal. And what about the groves? Well, those that's those nature lovers. You know, they would... Witches, they'd go out in the wood, uh, the among the trees, and dance around the moonlight, a uh, full moon naked and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They uh, little story that I heard. Can't one hundred percent verify it, but uh, there was a. Christian detective working in LA. You're talking back in the probably 80s or 90s. I think late 80s. In the 80s sometime. And he, um, his wife had just had a baby. Baby's in the um, nursery. He's off duty, you know. And uh, he noticed a woman dressed in civilian clothes, going to the bathroom. She came out and she's dressed as a nurse. So she's looking around, making sure nobody's there, goes into the nursery and grabs his baby. 
and he's like wondering, oh, what's going on here? Well, she goes back into the bathroom, changes out of the nursing clothes. Now, let me let you in a little secret about big hospitals. They call in um, what they call rented nurses all the time. They call a nursing agency and get nurses to come in because they're short staffed. Somebody called in sick, vacations, whatever. It's a very common occurrence that, you know, new faces in uniforms, nursing uniforms in a hospital all the time. Nothing unusual about that. So he got a little suspicious, but he didn't want to confront her right then and there because he's wondering what's going on here. So uh, she takes, I think she took the elevator and, you know, it's probably only a couple floors or something, you know. So I think he took the stairs and watched her come out the stairs and he's like by the door. She's walking to the door and she walks out the front door or right around that time. So the uh, fake nurse goes outside and standing by the entranceway and uh, this off-duty detective pulls out his service pistol, points it smack dab in her face and says, if you harm that baby, I'm blowing your brains all over the place. And then some people were screaming, call the police, call the police. He's like, I am the police. Call 911, get a patrol car out here. So they arrest her for kidnapping. And uh, they got a warrant and went to her apartment and they found all kinds of satanic literature there. I mean, Church of Satan stuff, witchcraft, uh, all kinds of stuff. They found uh, what's called the satanic calendar. And that would list the um, times of the year that they would do human sacrifices. Let me tell you what they are. Of course, Halloween. Christmas, you know, the, the winter solstice, uh, Halloween, and uh, Easter, the spring solstice. Yeah. So uh, they uh, found a map that had marking on it of an area. And I think it was an orange grove, if I remember correctly. A grove, an orange grove. So they got a warrant or whatever and started looking around that area and they found uh, baby skeletons uh, in the area, you know, buried. You know, I guess they were sacrificed. Um, I, if memory serves me correctly, the heads were cut off, drained the blood. Got, you know, really nice stuff, right? Um, this detective... He was on TV a while back. I'm not sure if it was national or local, but uh, something you should know is um, those uh, three times of the year, Halloween, Christmas, and Easter, about three weeks before those three days, you know, let's say nine weeks, you know, like three weeks before each one of those holidays, or a month even, half the kidnappings, child kidnappings, occurred during those time periods in the United States. So, yeah. I was in Denver. Oh, and by the way, the Church of Satan, uh, he started investigating them because they had satanic that satanic literature stuff. But uh, they decided to move. <laughs> so they moved to Denver. And um, they found a, a headless body in a dumpster twice with the blood drained when I was living there around 91 or so, 92, 90, 93, somewhere around there. I don't remember exact year. But uh, Anton LaVey was the founder of the Church of Satan. His daughter, um, his real name was Livy. Yeah, tribe. Um, she lived, she lived in, uh, Aurora, which is a suburb of Denver. Yeah. When I was living there. So, uh, yeah, when the, when they started finding all these children bodies, they, uh, Church of Satan decided to move and, uh, didn't want to be part of it. And then they, like I say, they started finding 
dead bodies with the heads cut off and the blood drained in Denver. I was like, wow. And uh, when I was going out in the woods and doing camping and stuff, we were finding dead animals all o a lot. Uh, some, you know, satanic, satanic stuff. But my point is, this is when they talk when the bible talks about the groves satanism all right so and the children of israel did evil in the sight of the lord and forgot the lord their god and served balaam and the groves human sacrifice people you know what do you think they're doing with the blood they're drinking it it's where all this vampire garbage comes from verse eight so israel is getting involved in this and they're marrying they're marrying their into the Canaanites. Therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cush Harish Hashem, whatever, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Cush Harish Hashem eight years. So God gave them into the hands of their enemy. And this guy's treating them bad. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And you want to read about Caleb and all them, um, read the book of uh, Joshua. Verse 10. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel and went out to war it didn't say oh well yeah we need to we need to go preach to these people and tell them about the love of jesus no war and the lord delivered Cusha or whatever king of mesopotamia into his hand and his hand prevailed against chisha whatever and the land had rest 40 years and othniel the son of kenaz died Seems like every time the, the judge dies, what happens? Everybody goes into apostasy. Let's read it. And the children of Israel did evil again. Ooh, the children of Israel did evil. I told you, you're going to be reading that a lot. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek. Who's Amalek? Amalek is a grandson of Esau. God didn't like Esau. You know that the Bible even tells you in Obadiah, and I think it's Romans too, uh, Romans also, God hated Esau. But, but, but we're supposed to love the sinner and hate the sin. Or hate the sin and love the sinner. Uh, sometimes the Lord hates the sinner. In Malachi 1.3, the Lord says, And I hated Esau. And I hated Esau. Romans 9.13, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I Hated. Yeah. In the book of Exodus 17 and verse 16. For he said, because the Lord hath sworn, the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war, war with Amalek from generation to generation. How long is that? Uh, generation to generation. Well, you see, Chaplain Bob, what that really means is until Jesus come, uh, until Jesus comes, and then he's going to love everybody. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, not inspired version. Or maybe that's in the Satanic Bible. I'm not sure. But the Lord's going to have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And that was Esau's grandson. 
Judges 3, 13, And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek, and went and smote Israel, and possessed the city of palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, eighteen years. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a man left-handed. And by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. But Ehud made him a dagger, which had two edges, a double-edged dagger, of a cubit length. Huh, what's a cubit? Well, generally, a cubit was considered from the tip of the elbow to the tip of the index finger, roughly 18 inches, or a foot and a half. Or for you people in the European Union, about half a meter. Uh, that people is one heck of a, uh, yeah, that's even bigger than, that's like twice the size of a Bowie knife. Um, in the military, generally military knives are a minimum of six to seven inches. And this is like three times the length of a three inch, I mean, a six inch knife. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's going to make sure the job gets done. So, made him a dagger which had two edges of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his raiment under upon his right thigh. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab, and Eglon was a very fat man. And when he had made an, F, uh, an end to offer the present, he sent away the people that bear the present. So, I mean, I'm thinking these are uh, Israelites that carried the present or whatever. But he turned, but he himself turned again from the quarries. So evidently they're, they're doing some mining from the quarries that were by Gilgal and said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king. So I got a secret message for you. Who said, the king, he said, who said, keep silence. And all that stood by him went out from him. So he says, oh, you got a secret message for me. Be quiet. Everybody leave. And, you know, he kicks everybody out. Verse 20, and Ehud came unto him, and he was sitting in a summer parlor, which he had for himself alone. And Ehud said, I have a message from God unto thee. And he arose out of his seat. So remember, Ehud's got the, the big knife. And Ehud put forth his left hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly. Now, yeah, big fat guy, but hey, 18 inches goes a long way. And the haft also went in after the blade. So what's the haft? You're talking the, um, the handle, the whole thing, all 18 inches of it. And the fat closed upon the blade so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly. And the dirt came out. I'm not sure how dirt came out. I'm not sure... I'm not sure. Let me look that up real quick. Dirt, according to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, which I really... Webster was a believer, and his word definitions actually have uh, the Bible verse. Believe it or not, dirt, noun, D-U-R-T, uh, it's pronunciation, um, it actually shows you the very verse uh, that we're, I've been reading, and it shows Isaiah 57.20. It shows you a couple places where the word actually appears. But a, a dirt means any foul or filthy substance, uh, including excrement. Well, of course, it could mean earth, mud, you know, whatever. Um, 
Whatever adhering to anything renders it foul or unclean. So the dirt came out. Verse 23. Then Ehud went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. And uh, let's see. When he was gone out, his servants came. And when they saw that, behold, the doors of the parlor were locked. They said, surely he, the king, covereth his feet in his summer chamber. And they tarried till they were uh, ashamed, and behold, he opened not the doors of the parlor. Therefore they took a key and opened them, and behold, their Lord was fallen down dead on the earth. And Ehud, the Israelite, remember? And Ehud escaped while they tarried, and passed beyond the quarries, and escaped unto Siroth. And it came to pass, when he had come, that he blew a trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them. And he said unto them, Follow after me, for the Lord hath delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. Huh. But, but, Chaplain Bob, the Lord says we're supposed to love our enemies. Yeah, we're supposed to love our enemies. But um, are we supposed to love the enemies of the Lord? Like Amalek? I'm going to have war from generation to generation? You want to love Satan? You want to love the Lord's enemies? I'm going to pass on that. But hey, you, you, can, you can listen to Calvary Chapel and they'll tell you that we're supposed to love everybody. Yeah, well, I know they love Satan and... or whatever yeah if they want to love satan let them go for it i don't know what they love maybe they love money i don't know and he ehud said unto them follow after me for the lord hath delivered your enemies the moabites into your hand and they went down after him and took the fords of jordan toward moab and suffered not a man to pass over and they slew of moab at that time about ten thousand men all lusty and all men of valor, and there escaped not a man. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest four score years. Eighty years they had rest. After him, and after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which flew, slew, killed, slew the Philistines, six hundred men with an ox goad, and he also delivered Israel. What's a what's a goad? It's a a pointy a pointy stick. You know you you uh, when you want the ox to move, you stick it with a sharp stick, and it's gonna you know if it's just standing there, and you point st 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 stick it with the stick, a pointy stick. Uh, it's going to make it want to move a little faster to get out, you know. Yeah. It means to prick, to drive with a goad, to incite, to stimulate, to urge forward, or to rouse. Uh, yeah. Ox goad. Yeah. He slew 600 Philistines with an ox goad. And he also delivered Israel. Boy, I'll tell you what, you're going to be hearing that. And Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. You're going to be hearing that a lot if you listen, continue listening. So, yeah, people, uh, the Church of Satan was actually uh, incorporated in the United States on June 6, 1966, 6666, by Anton LaVey, Levy. Um, so, uh, yeah. And the church tolerated that. And I'm sure Billy Graham said, uh, something to the effect that, you know, well, we, we need to preach to them and, and show them love. Cause I sure didn't hear him say what, uh, to do what the Bible says to do. Yeah. The book of Leviticus tells you what to do with the this kind of stuff but uh 
I'm sure that didn't come out of the mouth of Billy. Billy Goat Graham. And by the way, Graham is a common um, you-know-who-ish name. Believe it or not, it is. Graham is a very common name. So, all oh, blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.